in a moment, Act One of A Strange Day in May, starring William Mason, and written especially for suspense by Michael Healy. This portion of suspense is brought to you by the makers of Marlboro Cigarettes. Julie London sings a Marlboro song. Why don't you settle back, settle back. and have a full-flavored smoke? Settle back, settle back. with a Marlboro. Make yourself comfortable whenever you smoke. Have a Marlboro cigarette. A lot to like with a Marlboro filter, filter. flavor, flavor, pack or box. Try Marlboro, the filter cigarette with the unfiltered taste. It could have been yesterday or a hundred days before. I'm not sure anymore. Time has become just a word. All I know for certain is that it began that bright morning in May. I, Major Thomas Manning, U.S. Air Force on special assignment at Claymore Island, was on the verge of realizing a dream that would become a nightmare. I was suited up, waiting to be put into the rocket Gibraltar III, saying goodbye to my wife, Mary. I guess it was the quietest room at Claymore that morning. Oh, Tom, I wish I felt more confident. Oh, Mary, easy. They'll be calling me soon. Honey, it's hard enough. I know. I'm, I'm sorry. I... You know, it's hard to believe. After all the training, conditioning, study... Oh, Tom, I'm frightened. It seemed like a dream until now. I haven't dared let myself think what could happen. But now... Honey, I'm... please. Don't talk like that. It's really no more dangerous than driving a car. Oh, Tom, you know what I'm talking about. Look, Mary, you... Will you listen? Two men before you have gone up there and disappeared. Just vanished. Vanished somewhere up there. Uh, what's going to happen to you? Mary, we've been all through this. I don't know what happened to those other men. We may never know, but... We've got to try and find out. Somewhere there's an answer. Now, my mission is to try and find it. Is it your mission to leave and never come back? What's out there as important as my love for you? My need for you? I don't know. But remember last summer? The night you found me lying on the hammock staring up at the stars? Well, the nearer this has come to happening, the more the fascination's grown until... Yes, I remember. You were almost in a trance. Honey, I felt possessed. The universe was calling me to explore its secrets. It's that simple. And Mary, I... I feel I'm going to learn what happened to the others. This is Maurice Tarplin speaking to you from the network pool at Claymore Island facility just off the southern coast of California, where astronaut Major Thomas Manning will blast off within the hour into the frontier aloft we know as space. It seems fairly definite that this flight is more than experimental. From the beginning, there has been an air of mystery and considerable rumor about this venture. We do know that it will be the furthest flight yet attempted. Here's a quick rundown. Liftoff is scheduled for 0600 this morning here on Claremore Island. And it's turned into a fine morning. So the takeoff should be right on schedule. I see Colonel Alvin Marks coming from Central Control. He's the head man in this operation. We've been trying to get his eye all morning. Now, if I can just get his attention now. Uh, oh, uh, Colonel Marks. Yes? Colonel Marks, sir. A few questions for our network yes, audience. Yes, but you'll have to be brief. Sir, uh, I just wanted to ask you if there's anything in the rumor that this is not just another experimental flight. I mean, if there's something going on, but... Marks, you... Tell tracking stations to check out, Lieutenant. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm not going to comment on any of those rumors. I will say this. A great deal could depend on this shot, but uh, you'll have to bear with us until it's over. Colonel Mark, can we see over here for a minute, sir? Uh, will you, excuse oh, me? One more thing, Colonel. Uh, where is Major Manning now? Uh, standing by. There'll be no interviews until after debriefing. He's saying goodbye to his wife. And that's what I'm saying to you. I've got to go into him now for our final words. Oh, thank you, Colonel Mark. That was Colonel Alvin Mark in charge of today's space shot whose comments just now have left us about where we were in the running tide of rumors. We return you now to... Hello, Colonel Marks. Well, it's almost time. How do you feel, Tom? Fine, sir. And anxious. Good. Mary, you'll be able to watch the lift off from here if you like. Colonel Marks, do you think there is life? I mean, hostile life on any other planet? We can only guess. Possible. I'd say that if there is, it would be a far different kind of being than we know, but who can say? It'll be a long time before we know the answer to that. Maybe they'd be like us. <laughs> Perhaps, but I doubt it. Uh, Tom, may I speak to you a moment privately? I'll stand over by the window. What is it, Colonel? Tom, you remember what both the missing men reported just before they disappeared. Seeing a strange blinding light. Yes, a blinding light coming at them out of nowhere mm. that seemed to gobble them up. Any new theory? None. Maybe some celestial current powerful enough to... If you can see it, don't get too close. Just see what you can make of it and come back down. I will, sir. And we'll be waiting to pick you up in the desert as arranged. Goodbye, Tom. Good luck. I'll be talking with you over the intercom. Right. Well, honey, that's it. Oh, Tom, hold me for a minute, please. Now, now, it's going to be all right. I'll be down before you know it. Come back to me, Tom. And, Tom, I'm very proud, too. <laughs> This is Maurice Tarplin at Network Pool, ladies and gentlemen. Astronaut Tom Manning is in the spaceship Gibraltar 3, which is being given a final check by the launching crew. Oh, down this the is a precision okay, operation, the climax of checkout procedures that have touched every operational aspect of all systems. Excitement is mounting here. There is an ominous mixture of anxiety and hope in the air. Unless something unforeseen looms now, the flight will definitely go on schedule just a few moments from now. Well, we switch now to operations control and Colonel Marks, who will be in continuous touch with Major Manning during his flight. Come in, Colonel Marks, at operations control. This is Colonel Marks. Hello, Gibraltar 3. Come in, Gibraltar 3. Can you read me? Over. All systems are go here, Tom. Good luck. Over. Over. Our vast audience is now linked with ground control and its connection with Major Manning. It's your baby, Tom. I'm switching you over to countdown. Any final questions? Tom, lift off was perfect. You are climbing nicely. How do you feel? Feeling fine. Keys are building. You're programming well. Pressure okay. Oxygen okay. You'll be entering maximum G's in a very few moments. Roger. Climbing nicely. Climbing nicely. Tom. Manning. It's two plus six hours, eight minutes. Do you read me? Over. Yes, Colonel Mark. Time checked here. 
Colonel? Yes, Tom. I thought I ought to describe what I'm feeling. It's so still and quiet. I've been trying to think of words to express what I see and feel. The nearest I can come is blue rapture. I'm in a blue rapture. Maybe that has no meaning down there. I don't know. Colonel, something new is happening. Or it seems to be. I keep thinking I'm seeing something darting out ahead of me. Probably my imagination, but... Not what, Tom? I have been spotting something, but I... I couldn't tell what it was. I, I can see it. Kind of glowing out there. It... It seems to be getting closer. Tom, what's wrong? I suddenly feel very strange. Hard to get breath, yet... Oxygen pressure is... Fine. Don't understand. Down your knees, pull off your cord. Check your control. Aye, sir. I'm trying. But they're fouled somehow. Can't understand it. Keep trying. We can't guide you. You're not responding to power control. Can't do it, sir. I've lost control here, too. Our tracking station reports have been pulled off course 40 degrees. Can you see anything more? No, I... Wait. I do see something now. It's coming closer. Closer and closer. Try to get away, Tom. Try and take control again. Hurry before it's too late. Can't do it. No use. Coming closer. What is it? Great blinding light. Like an aurora borealis. I can't see her. What is it, Tom? You blinded. What's happening? It's stopping. Tom, Tom, can you read me? I, I'm not getting you. Come to the floor of three. Can you read me? Jip out of three. I'd lost contact with the earth. I blacked out. How long I was out, how my ship landed, how I survived, Major. I'll never know. I never learned. Major Manning? But I did come to. Major Manning, oh, can you hear me? I'm moving now. <sighs> my head. <laughs> Throbbing it feels like somebody swinging a 12-pound sledgehammer against my brain. But the numbers. Major. <sighs> Make the hammer stop. Somebody, please make him stop. How are you feeling, Major? Huh? Coming around now. Oh. oh, I thought I heard a voice. How does it look, Doctor? You'll be all right, Colonel March. Good. Yes. Well, Mary Manning, what do you think now? I can't quite believe it, Colonel March. Just proves out our theory again. Oh, I don't know about the others, okay. but only oh, mm. Annie. Where am I? Right now, you're lying on a cot at the base medical station. Colonel March, is that you? Yes. Mary. Oh, Mary, it's good to be back. Hello, darling. Hello. Well, just hello? Yeah, what kind of a greeting is that? Sorry, but that's the best I can do. What do you mean? Colonel, I can't stay here any longer. I understand. It's all right. Go ahead. Mary. Mary, where are you going? No, no, I'll settle back, please, Major. But that's my wife. What's the matter with her? Colonel, what is it? Why, nothing, Major. Really is remarkable, Colonel Marx. I never would have believed it if I hadn't seen it. You forget I've seen it twice before. Oh, I heard about it. Colonel Mark, how did I get here? We found you suspended on the fringe of the atmosphere and brought you down. But how did I get there? Possibly you were picked up and hurled there by what we sometimes call a celestial storm. <laughs> it must have been quite a shock. I mean, you probably thought you'd never see me again. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, doctor, I have to get back to my office now. I, uh, I have to make the arrangements. How soon before you'll be ready? Another hour, I'd say. Fine, fine. That'll be perfect. Just perfect. And about an hour later, I was taken somewhere by two men from the rescue crew. I can't remember their names, but I know their faces from all the pre-flight tests. Strange, though. If I didn't know better, 
I'd say they were more like guards. Something in the grim of their faces. All right. Here he is, Colonel. Come in, Major. Come in. Anything else, sir? That'll be all. Take a seat, Major. Smoke? Well, you know I don't smoke, sir. Oh, yes, of course. You, uh, you do have friends that smoke, so don't you? Well, sure. So what? Uh, what are you jotting down, sir? You've seen me smoke before, haven't you? Yes, many times. Why? Colonel, I... How was the trip, Major? Well, everything was fine until I saw it. Until you saw what? The blinding light. Blinding light? The blinding light that the other two astronauts saw just before they disappeared. Sir, if you pardon me saying so, th this questioning seems a little odd, considering... I do not pardon you, Major. There is an infinite variety of answers to even the most minute questions. It's only a matter of choosing the most correct one. Well, I'm afraid I don't follow, sir. Perhaps you will. In time, may we continue? Sorry, sir. It doesn't matter about this blinding light. That was the celestial storm I mentioned. There is another more important point. What's that, sir? I'm getting to it. But first, at what speed were you traveling when you saw this light? As I sat here and listened to this familiar now, voice and tone and stare about these this. familiar walls, I kept I'm thinking, another question. this is unreal. I want you Something's to wrong. Talking Something's talking out of sync. I was part of a puzzle. And why did you land? The pieces that make up the picture match, but you, or do you not quite land? fit. I know. And I wonder if perhaps I it isn't me. Maybe I'll my be. mind was affected somehow. I'm, I'm waiting myself. for an answer, Major. What was your speed? I'm not sure, sir. The gauges seem to be off on my last reading. Are you sure you don't know, Major? Sir, if I knew, I would tell you. Maybe, maybe not. But why shouldn't I, sir? You might have reasons of your own. Now, what reason could I possibly have for withholding information from what you? What time did you lift off this morning? What time did I lift off? I'm waiting for your answer. Oh, 600 hours. And now to the point, Major. What was your mission? My mission? Well, you mean the space probe? Calm, calm now, Major. Let's get down to cases. Call it a space probe or anything else, but wasn't your mission to get information about our installations here? I don't get it. It's as if you didn't even know me. My mission was to learn what happened to the other two men. I see. What are you doing, Colonel? Calling the guards. I'm finished with you. It's up to the doctors now. The guards? Well, exactly why do I need to be guarded? Colonel, the doctor. What... Hello, thank you. Oh, what... Colonel, I'll kill you with your own gun. Oh, now look, son. Be sensible. Return that revolver. It won't help you. No, thanks. I know exactly what's going on. You're only making it hard on yourself, son. We'll try and help you if you'll let us. Colonel, sir, are you all right? Tell him yes. Everything is all right. Return to your post. Yes. He's gone. Now what? I don't know. I've got to think. Mary, I've got to get home and tell her what's happened. Sorry, Colonel. But I'll have to belt you one. Give yourself up. The authorities will get you sooner or later. Uh... Uh, see you, Colonel. <laughs> This is my house. Now, oh, don't get panicky. Just sit tight. Run into the house. Get the money out of my wallet. Now, hold on just a minute. Now, now let's see where did I leave my wallet. Oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah, must be in this drawer somewhere. What are you doing? Huh? Oh, oh, Mary, am I glad to see you. You've no idea what I've been through. Here, let me pay the cab driver and I'll... No need for that. It's been taken care of. Oh. Oh, I see. Ma Mary, I... Don't touch me. Oh, Mary, aren't you glad to see me? Why, well, well, yes, of course. It's, it, it's just that I... Mary, look at me. Mary, this is your husband, Tom Manning. Mary, what's the matter with you? What's the matter with everybody? Nothing. Nothing at all. Well, then why do you look at me like I was some kind of a bug or something? It's... It's like you're not even the same person I said goodbye to this morning. Mary, don't you remember how you said goodbye to me just before I took off? Mary, you said, please, come back to me. Listen to me, please. I don't know you. Oh, I'm Major Thomas Manning's wife, but you're not my husband. What are you saying? They tricked you. I don't know whether I'm doing right or not, but I'm warning you to get out of here before it's too late. Mary, what are you saying? Stop shaking and let me go. All right, let her go. 
Colonel Marsh. Grab him. Oh, no. take it easy now. No. No, no, this can't be. This is this is my house. This is my wife. I'm afraid that's where you're wrong. You have no rights here whatsoever. For the love of me. Colonel Marsh, what is happening? You better come with us, Major. Major, we're going to take you to a nice place where you'll get lots of care. No. No, now let go of me. Come along quietly. No, you're wrong. You're all wrong. Something is out of whack here. Well, that's that. I'm sorry you had to go through this, Mary. It's all right, sir. I saw them taking him away. He didn't see me, though. Sorry about this, Major Manning. Especially the day before your flight into space. No trouble. Well, goodbye. See you tomorrow morning. Goodbye, Colonel. Goodbye, Colonel. Well, that was certainly a fright, Tom. <laughs> Hysterical creatures, our counterparts on Earth. I'm so sorry for him. I wonder if they all act that way. Oh, at first, I think. But he'll calm down when he finds he won't be harmed. Strange, isn't it? Knowing that for every one of them, there's one of us up here. And so alike. Mm -hmm. Why, that man has a wife down there who's exactly like me. What will they do with him? Oh, take him to the Institute. Study him along with the other two. Well, he'll get good care there. Yes. And, uh, don't forget, there's, uh, well, there's something to be learned from Earth creatures. Uh, or people, rather. I, I think we'd have to call them people. Eventually, they probably will be. Now, the way I look at it, it's a small universe. Sooner or later, darling, we uh, may need each other. We here and our, uh, well, somewhat retarded twins on Earth. Suspense. You've been listening to Strange Day in May, starring William Mason, and written especially for Suspense by Michael Healy. Suspense is produced and directed by Fred Hendrickson. Heard in tonight's story were Tony Darnay, Reynolds Osborne, Bill Lipton, Herb Duncan, Maurice Tartlin, and Bill Smith. Music supervision by Ethel Huber. Sound patterns by Walter Otto. Technical direction by Michael Shoskin. This is Stuart Metz speaking. Listen again next week when we return with another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com.